Hi, thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm so excited to have the opportunity to talk to you about the horse's saddle support or rider support area. I want to honor you for being here and thank you for seeking new ways and innovative ways to help your horse and also to help yourself have a better relationship with your horse through the study of anatomy. So in this uh, video, I, like I said, we're going to be discovering um, what is in the horse's saddle support area and how he needs to move to give the maximum support to the rider and to himself to avoid injury, what bones are in that, that area, and which muscles, which muscles need to be built up and how. So in, in uh, my experience with my horse, I did not know this for, for a long time. And unfortunately, that caused my horse to become sway-backed. Not only did he become sway-backed, he was very fearful, he was very jumpy, very unpredictable. And that was because of the pain that he had from my lack of knowledge, of not knowing which muscles to build up and what was affecting his, his spinal column and, and what he was actually feeling and why he was reacting in such ways. And that's what I'm going to be dis um, covering in this video. The horse needs to round his back in order to build strength over his top line. Exercises such as this, the shoulder four, will help build those muscles. But what's important that is that the horse is working properly from behind and pushing his back up. Oftentimes riders ask the horse to do a shoulder four, but he's still dropping his back down. The thoracic vertebra start at the base of the neck. The first thoracic vertebra, T1, is quite small. And these gradually become longer as you get closer to the withers and then they become shorter when you get into the back. Now the long pointy part, or what looks like a long pointy part, on the top of the vertebra is called the spinous processes. The spinous processes have spaces in between which we want to keep open, and as open as we can. Over the top of the back runs the longissimus muscle, as you can see here. This is an important muscle for the horse's rider support. Laying over the longissimus dorsi muscle, we find the latissimus muscle. This muscle extends from the shoulder up and over the, with the withers. As you can see, this is an important muscle for rider support. And finally, the most superficial, we have the thoracolumbar fascia. This lays so, somewhat like a blanket over the top of the horse. All of these must be healthy and strong to give maximum rider support and safety to the horse. We locate the rider support area by locating the horse's last rib. We follow that up and that'll probably be about at T18, depending on the number of vertebrae your horse has. Rider support is between T18 and the scapula. The, the saddle must sit far enough back to avoid hitting the scapula. Behind T18 we have the sacrum and the lumbosacral. We never want to sit on these parts of the horse. 